Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this short video, I would like to take just a few minutes of your time to remind you of some of the recommended acts and some of the virtues of doing those acts in the month of Dhul Hijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, in Surah Al Hajj, لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ so that they may witness that which benefits them and so that they may remember the name of Allah during certain known days. Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala narrated from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that Ibn Abbas said, those certain known days are the first 10 days of the hijjah In this video, I would like to remind all of us about the virtues of these early 10 days of the hijjah and some of the recommended acts that we are commanded to do in them. As for the virtue of these 10 days, then Jabir radiallahu an narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, أَفْضَلُ أَيَّامِ الدُّنْيَا أَيَّامُ الْعَشْرِ The best days in the whole world are the first 10 days of the hijjah and it was also narrated that the Prophet wasallam said, there is no deed that is better in the sight of Allah or more greatly rewarded than a good deed which is done in the first 10 days of Al-Adha. Some of the companions said, not even jihad for the sake of Allah. The Prophet wasallam said, not even jihad for the sake of Allah unless a man goes out with himself and his wealth and doesn't return with either of them. So this tells us the virtue of doing good deeds in general in these 10 days. And there are some specific good deeds that we want to do as well. Number one, the remembrance of Allah. As we heard in the ayah at the beginning of this video clip, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to make these 10 days days of remembrance of Allah and to increase in the remembrance of Allah during those 10 days. It was narrated from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are no days that are greater before Allah or in which good deeds are more beloved to him than these 10 days. So recite a great deal of tahleel, of saying la ilaha illallah, and a great deal of takbir, saying Allahu Akbar, and a great deal of tahmeed, saying Alhamdulillah during them. So in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam is commanding us to fill these days by saying La ilaha illallah, by saying Allahu Akbar, and by saying Alhamdulillah. And this is to be done throughout the 10 days, wherever it is permissible to remember Allah, whether it is outside or whether it is inside, whether it is inside of the masajid or whether it is outside of the masajid, at all the times that it is permissible to remember Allah, it is recommended in these 10 days to fill it with the statements La ilaha illallah and Allahu Akbar and Alhamdulillah. And of course, for the men, those statements should be recited aloud and for the ladies, they should be recited quietly so that nobody else can hear them except for themselves or perhaps the person that is standing next to them. Number two, sacrifice. Everybody knows that sacrifice plays a huge part in the first uh, 10 days of the hijjah and indeed particularly on Yawm al-Nahr, the day of sacrifice, Eid al-Adha, when the people sacrifice their animals. And there are a number of forms of sacrifice. Uh, from the forms of sacrifice is of course the Hajj pilgrim who sacrifices as part of their Hajj. From the forms of the Hajj sacrifice that perhaps many people are not aware of, is to send a sacrificial animal to Mecca even if you yourself are not performing Hajj, i.e. to arrange for a sacrifice to be carried out in Mecca on the days or on the day of sacrifice, but even though you are not performing the Hajj yourself. And of course from the sacrifice which we all know about is the sacrifice that is asked for from every household. And that is that in every household one animal should be sacrificed if that ha household is able to do so. 
And of course, there are some options in this with regard to the sacrificial animal. Uh, if it is a sheep or something similar, then it is done one per household. And if it is a cow, then up to seven people can share in it. And the scholars differed over whether this sacrifice is obligatory or optional with the Malikiyah and the Shafi'iyah and some of the Hanabila saying that it is strongly recommended and the Hanafis and a view from Al-Imam Ahmed and this was the preferred opinion of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala that it is an obligation. So whichever the situation, it is strongly, strongly recommended that every household that is financially able sacrifices one sacrificial animal uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the days of, or during the days of sacrifice. And also from the rules of the sacrifice is that as soon as a person decides that their household is going to offer that sacrifice, then the person who is offering the sacrifice in the household refrains from cutting their nails and refrains from cutting their hair during the uh, 10 days of the hijjah from the point that they realize that they are going to offer that sacrifice. So for example, if you know right now that you're going to offer this sacrifice before the first day of the Hijjah begins, then from the first of the Hijjah at Maghrib time when the day comes in until the animal is sacrificed, you should refrain from cutting your hair or your nails. If you don't know or don't decide until later on, then as soon as you've made that firm decision that you're going to offer that sacrifice, you should refrain from cutting your hair or your nails during that time. And the strongest opinion is that this does not apply to the pilgrim. So this doesn't apply to the one who is making hajj, rather the one who is making hajj uh, refrains from cutting their hair and their nails whenever they are in ihram. As for the people who are not going to hajj, then they do refrain from cutting their hair and their nails from the first of the hijjah and Allah knows best. Number three, fasting. From the deeds which are highly recommended in the early days of the Hijjah are to fast, particularly to fast the day of Arafah, which is the ninth day, the day before the Hujjaj sacrificed their animals, the day when all of the Hujjaj stand in front of Allah Azzawajal on the plain of Arafah. On that day, it is highly recommended for the one who is not performing Hajj to fast on that day. As for the one who is performing the Hajj, then they are not required to fast on that day and in fact it is disliked for them to do so because it prevents them from worshipping Allah to the full extent on that day. So it's highly recommended for the people who are not performing the Hajj to fast, particularly the ninth, but indeed they can fast all of the days before that, the first until the ninth. And there are a number of ahadith from the Prophet وسلم, and a number of athar from his companions which indicate that they would strive to fast as many of the days of the Hijjah as possible. So from the first of the Hijjah, uh, which would be announced at the Maghrib, from the next day at Fajr fasting, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And of course, it is not permissible to fast the day of Eid. And as we said, this fasting is not for the one who is performing the Hajj, but for the one who is not performing the Hajj. Number four, the general performance of good deeds and striving to do more good deeds in these 10 days than you would normally do. You know, after Ramadan has left us and we find ourselves with a little bit of a dip in our Iman after striving so hard in the last 10 days of Ramadan, Allah blesses us by bringing us these 10 days of the Hijjah which are there for you to strive in as much as you would have strived in the last 10 days of Ramadan or even more. So this includes striving in the day and in the night. And it's narrated that more than one of the companions would strive particularly with regard to the night prayer, with regard to repentance, with regard to giving charity, with regard to doing as many good deeds in the day and in the night as possible. And of course, though doing those good deeds also entails abandoning sin as well. So it entails a person looking at themselves, repenting to Allah, leaving the sins that they are doing, working harder to be a better person, just like the people would do in the last 10 days of Ramadan, you should also intend to do in the first 10 days of the Hijjah, as is narrated from more than one of the companions. So this covers a number of good deeds, but particularly during the day, uh, the general good deeds, avoiding the haram, speaking that which is good, 
uh, giving charity and so on, and particularly during the night, uh, the night prayer, and focusing on really getting yourself back up to that Ramadan level that you were in. This is a clear sunnah in the first 10 days of the Hijjah. So this concludes our short video reminding all of us of the virtue of these first 10 days and we conclude by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which benefits us and to benefit us with what he teaches us and to give us all the ability to take the most out of the first 10 days of the Hijjah and indeed out of the rest of the year whether we are performing Hajj or whether we are staying at home and that's what we have time for in this short video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.